Welcome to Life, Language, and Lyrics with me, Lena, where you can listen to conversations that I have with some of the most interesting people I know. Thank you for stopping through. Now let's get into this episode. Hello and welcome to another episode of Life, Language, and Lyrics with Lena. And I'm so excited today. We are talking about a survivor story with Miss Ariel Johnson, who I have here. Thanks for joining me today, Ariel. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And sharing my story and uh, getting across the platform of what it's like to have a brain injury. Yeah, I'm I'm so excited to be able to have this conversation with you. So Ariel Johnson is um, has a mental health blog um, where she shares information about brain injury and bringing awareness and all of the the um, the things that can come with that. Um, and she's also a brain injury survivor. So Ariel, first, uh, before we get into everything, can you just tell us anything that you want us to know about you? Yes. So I started this mental health blog um, to kind of bring light to having a a brain injury, but also to normalize mental health, right? Because it's like we all have a brain in today's society. Like we all have a brain as human beings, but I think society dumbs it down and doesn't let us talk about having depression, uh, talking about schizophrenia, talking about bipolar. You know, like I just kind of want to normalize we are all going through these things in our head and to let's talk about it more you know yes that sounds great so in this first section um I wanted you to just start off by telling us or sharing the story of how you sustained your brain injury okay so December 13th, 2007, I was in a car accident. I was 17 years old. I was uh, in high school at the time, senior senior year. Um, and as a senior, you can drive to and from school, mm-hmm. right? So I drove a 1983 Mercedes Benz. It, it was a tank. It saved my life. So it was hailing and snowing. And I don't know why they didn't clo- the district didn't close campus that day, but mm-hmm. I don't know. They, they just decided not to. So I left... Um, school and I was coming back around a bend and again reminder hailing snowing horrible out Mm -hmm. I swerved into the oncoming I was going around a bend I swerved into the oncoming lane hit a van collided into a pole and then another car hit us hit me on my passenger side Uh thank god there was an off-duty EMT professional two cars behind the van and he saved my life at the scene Mm -hmm. Um, I actually spoke to him I think like a couple of years ago, because I just wanted a clarification of what happened because I was unconscious, you know? Mm -hmm. So he immediately, he told me he immediately gets to my car, noticed I was unconscious because of the seatbelt was choking. Mm -hmm. Like I could have been dead right then and there if it wasn't for him. And it's even kind of wild telling it like now I get chills. I'm like, did that really happen? But like, (laughs) I'm, I'm so, I put it into a, like it happened to someone else, like in my mind, you know what I mean? I guess mm-hmm. to self-regulate. So um, he immediately tried to get to the front door, noticed it was jammed, like he couldn't. So he immediately went, somehow got into the back, right? And then he came up and like cut the uh, cut the seatbelt and then like pushed me up. So I had, my airway was not blocking and he okay. saw the front the breath of fresh air like that I had given. And then from that point, notice I was unconscious, immediately put me into an ambulance with another um, professional. Uh, I was cho- I was uh, throwing up, notice I was un- obviously I was unconscious. So I was, from there, I went to uh, Nassau Emergency Trauma Center. Mm-hmm. They, I had a, a me- emergency crani- craniectomy where mm-hmm. they removed the right part of the skull um, I was internally bleeding, hemorrhaging, like I, it, it, w- it was divine timing in it all, right? Mm-hmm. So I got to the hospital, they're basically telling my family, like, we don't know if she's going to make it, but we're going to do this emergency brain surgery. So they did it, they, they shaved off my hole, I had long, really nice hair, mm-hmm. shaved it all off, 
uh, removed the right part of my skull. So I have a big scar from here to about here. And it's like, I don't, I don't like, <laughs> whatever. So, so they removed the right part of my skull. Um, I was in a coma for a month and a half, or roughly. Um, I woke up midway through, they transferred me to Mount Sinai Hospital on 100th and Madison in Manhattan, one of the best brain injury uh, hospitals. So from there, they, um, I woke up mid-January, my right side, I remember it to this day, to the T, my right side was completely numb, like I could not move it because of, um, I think they work, because they work so much on my brain, mm -hmm. so I'm sorry, I missed this part, but I was on life support for two weeks, Okay. Um, uh, so I was in a coma, I, I got out of it, but I woke up, my right side was completely numb, um, I had to learn how to walk, talk, do everything over again and it made me so grateful to even like walk up the steps like like walk upstairs it's just like it's so wild how in a second your life can like change and then you just kind of have to adapt and pivot like okay this is my life now all right so so this is how I'm going to move forward and perspective mm -hmm. is everything so then I had a um a lot of um uh, so having a brain injury is kind of like, it's invisible. So nobody really knows what you're going through. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of, it's not like, unless you're physically hurt, you can see it, but nobody right. really sees what I'm going through, which makes it a little difficult. But anyway, I, I went through emotional regulation. I went to therapy, like physical therapy, learned how to walk, talk. Um, yeah. And now I'm doing this and I planted the seed in about 2011 12 when I was at my worst when I was very depressed and I was like there's no way that I can be alone going through all this like the memory the not being able to have conversations just just the little things that normal people it would be so easy for them like I would I would look at my sisters and I'd be like wow I want to be able to have full-blown on conversations and articulate my feelings and like sit at the dinner table and not get exhausted after five minutes of being there and then like go up into my room you know so um so I planted the seed of starting a mental health blog you know and this was 10 years ago and then fast forward to COVID um I'm like no, no, I have to do it. I have, I had this gut feeling in me was just like, help people, help people. Mm -hmm. So I started TBI me, a traumatic brain injury underscore me, but it's shortened to TBI. And um, where I do videos where it's like, I try to normalize it. You know what I mean? And I, in a positive way, because perspective is everything. Wow, that's an amazing story. <laughs> yeah, thank it's you. so wonderful to see you here. You know, when you hear someone say that they had to learn how to walk and talk all over again, yeah. <clears throat> I think it, it can be really hard to even imagine what that may look like. Um, and so to see you here <laughs> talking just fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, appreciate so it. I appreciate it. Let me it. ask you this. What do you... Um, cause what I've kind of heard you saying a little bit too, is a lot of like almost intrinsic motivation that you were, um, experiencing as you were going through your recovery process. What do you feel helped you the most, um, in your recovery? Um, my family, right. That support system that like they they were just there to tell me like, no, you can, I, we know you can do it. You know, like it's kind of that tough love mentality where it was just like they didn't let me um feel sorry for myself in a way you yeah. know what I mean like where I want like even now like I want to play victim like unintentionally like I want to play victim I want to feel sorry for myself and they're like no 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 you got you got things to do right. like what are you doing so I think that really that support and knowing I can lean on them mm -hmm. no matter what throughout my recovery you know was it was so helpful okay and you kind of already touched on um we talked about your blog or we mentioned it um and how you use like your social media page how yeah. do you feel like you use that as a way to inform and connect I've seen that's actually how we connected right yes, um, yes. <laughs> during that same time um and so you do put up some really interesting videos and I do think that they are very helpful 
Um, Because you talk Mm -hmm. about a lot of topics, like you said, that people tend to avoid some, um, and especially with brain injury, because what I notice sometimes is, um, as a speech pathologist, people will get so caught up in, let's make sure they can communicate, let's make sure they can eat, they can walk, they can talk, but they kind of forget about that inner part of the person, right? Um, So how do you feel like um, you've been able to use your social media um, with that? I have found that just being vulnerable mm-hmm. and and not putting out like so I tried to do this years ago and like to like I said 2011 I would mm-hmm. I would sit in front of a camera and I had this whole I wrote out this whole thing and I'm like okay and I was trying to memorize it and then when when COVID hit and when I like um first initially started to do it like my videos I was like okay you know what I'm just going to be as real as possible. I'm just going to be as vulnerable as possible. And if I mess up, whatever, I'm mm-hmm. still getting my point across. And I'm, and I'm trying, like the essential part of it is to not feel alone. Like, you know what I mean? Like you are not the only person going through this, you know, like I even think about it now, like with dating or just with ever with everything in life, mm-hmm. you know, I, and then I talk to my sisters or I talk to my friends and they're like, Oh my God. Yeah. I go through that too, but it's just not talked about. So again, I use my social media as I just try to remain as vulnerable as possible and talk about things that people don't want to talk about, like drinking, like, like learning to accept this new you brain injury or not. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Okay. Um, has there been any specific post or connection that you've made from your social media page that has been like very meaningful to you um I think there was one back it was almost it was like eight months ago but it was about uh going to a family party you know or going to an event and um getting overstimulated you know and I, I got a lot of res- like um uh can uh, a lot of people commented you know about that because it's like every this overstimulation living in new york city or just being around family members that just don't understand you know what i mean or not even just family members friends or out you know what i mean like some people just don't understand that overstimulation for me is like a lot where i constantly need breaks i'm like i need a safe word with my then ex but I like I created a safe word with him or just like would be like all right it's time to go like I I, my social battery is drained this is too much (laughs) we gotta go and so many people aligned with that which was really cool you know to know that again I'm not alone in going through this yeah okay wow that's really interesting that that is something um that we talk about a lot especially I work with a lot of student athletes and they tend to say that same thing like if they're trying to um, engage in a conversation where there's more multiple people talking they tend to Mm -hmm. kind of just end up either one they get lost in the conversation or it's too much going on and they just like mentally they become fatigued um, or just a little like they yeah. really handle a lot of what's going on. Yeah. And to kind of compartmentalize and be like, okay, I'm going to give you this much energy of me, but then I need to, I need to leave. And it, again, getting lost in the conversation is, is a big thing that I, that happens to me a lot. And then I have to like retrack, like I have to talk to myself, like, no, get focus, get back to the conversation. Cause I, I tend to go. I dream a little bit. And I'm like, no, 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 focus, focus. Yeah. So now we're at the language part um, of the episode. So what I wanted you to do first is, could you just talk about the symptoms that were the most prevalent, like what you can remember, that were the most prevalent right after your injury? And then how have they kind of changed um, over time? Okay. Okay. Um, so when, uh, comfort, like communicating to people was a really big thing for me where I I couldn't, uh, even now I still have issues, um, uh, trying to say the story correctly and like going through it. 
Um, but that was like a really big thing for me in the beginning, like uh, trying to have conversations and stay staying with the point and then ending it, not taking forever to get my point across. And I think what helped was again, putting myself in situations that made me feel really, really uncomfortable to push myself to grow, right? Like I would push myself to go to parties, speak to people that I didn't know like how it would go, but I, I put myself in the situation where it was just like, all right, let's go. Let's have a conversation. If I mess up, I mess up. That's okay. I'll laugh it off and they won't even realize, you know what I'm saying? So, my, but the big thing was I knew what I wanted to say, Mm -hmm. Like I had it in my head, but I couldn't form or figure out the right words to connect the two. Cause like essentially when I woke up from the coma, that's, that's all I had to do was reconnect walking with the brain and then, and then doing it. So it was, that was emotional. That was uh commute, like communicating language, everything. So. Wow. So did you work with a speech language pathologist? In, a, in the beginning, I had an occupational therapist, I had a physical therapist, all that, but I I had an occupational therapist where we would um, do like word association with game, like we would do games in regards to word association, which helped a lot. But after a while, um, it the to get to the speech pathologist, it, I mean, to get to the occupational therapist, it, it was a lot. And in, straining on my recovery but after a while i started pushing myself to do brain games like sudoku mm -hmm. um crossword um you know how when the word is like messed up and you have to figure out the word like mm -hmm. it so I, I would push myself to try to do what i did with the occupational therapist over and over again so i can essentially be better okay. at, at communicating I find that interesting that they didn't refer you for a speech language pathologist. Yeah. I, well, I, don't know. I find it interesting, but I'm also not as surprised because yeah. there is this lack of awareness, which is why I try to do what I'm doing yeah. during this month of brain injury awareness. Um, there's um, also something that, you know, I mentioned this already with you, like that intrinsic motivation. Um, you've mentioned that a lot. Like, it sounds like you've really, you know, even though you had like a really good support system, you also have had this thing that has driven you. Where do you think that comes from? Okay. So I remember kind of like, kind of when I was in the hospital and I, w I, I rung uh, like the nurse to, for a nurse to come in and help me to the bathroom. Cause I couldn't do that by myself yet. I had a walker, um, and I remember we were walking, we walked to the bathroom and I look up and my skull was encaved. Like it was mm. so, such a weird thing to look at, but like, just imagine half of your head kind of gone and it's like the skin, <laughs> but whatever. So I remember looking at it and being like, uh, 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 no, 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 no. I am going like I made a promise to myself that there's no freaking way that I'm going to stay like this mm -hmm. uh, I'm not allowed to it's not going to happen I, I it was this promise to myself that I was like there's there's no way that I can change my reality in a second change my thoughts and I said, no matter how bad, I hit rock bottom. I looked at myself and I hit rock bottom, like rock bottom. And I was like, no, I'm going to be a, a normal citizen in today's society. I'm going to find a way. I'm going to figure it out and I'm going to get it done. I'm going to be able to walk. I'm going to be able to talk. I'm going to be able to have conversations. I'm going to be on Oprah. You know what I mean? Like I put these really high expectations for myself and ever since that moment I just kept on going and at my really dark moments I was like no I think back to that moment I was like I'm sorry what you're now now you're you're gonna be the best you can be because we're not going back there we're not allowed to go back there no nah, yeah. it's not gonna happen so again this so ever since that kind of moment I was just like I have to be positive because 
anytime I go back to that negativity in my mind, I'm like, huh, I think about my head and I'm like, mm -mm, no, no, no. It scared the living crap out of me to want to push me to be the best version of myself. And, and I think it's, and also like when you knock on death's door and run the hell away, I think like I can do anything, you know, like I put my mind to. And I, I've, you know, there were situations throughout my recovery where I'm like, I don't know, I'm going through something, right? And I was like, break up, whatever. And I go, I go, dad, mom, I don't know how I'm going to do this. Like I'm hysterically crying. And they're like, honey, honey, you've dealt with bigger, <laughs> bigger things. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Because I've put it so far in my mind. I don't even let it like, Mm -hmm. that was a hiccup like whatever you know what I mean and I just keep on going you have to have this mindset this positive mindset that no matter what you're gonna get through it like it's all gonna work out and even better and look I'm living my dream life I speak at conferences I'm writing a book I, I ha I'm helping people I'm inspiring people and it's it's this really good feeling to now even talk about it and like look back at as to where I was so yeah <laughs> I love that I mean you got me over here feeling excited too. <laughs> I love that's it so I love good. it I love that so much so okay that's a good segue into the next um question for this section um so if when I when I do the language section um sometimes if it's related then we'll talk about speech pathology or communication and language but okay. I also um, like to ask about like words of wisdom and advice. So mm -hmm. what would you say to other survivors um, who may be having some challenges in their own process of recovery? Okay, don't, uh, this is gonna sound so cliche and you're gonna okay. be like, shut up. Do not give up. Mm -hmm. The way through it is you literally have to go through the emotion. Mm -hmm. Right. Like no matter what, that energy is going to come back tenfold in a different way. So might as well go through the bad, the really bad moments, the really like not so good ones with full force, with effort, understanding that time doesn't stop for anyone. Mm -hmm. That literally time doesn't care for anyone, but you just have to keep on putting that effort in and realize that your mistakes of trying to do that new thing is actually good it means like you're on your way to like a hundred mistakes and you're on your way to that one yes mm -hmm. that one oh breakthrough you know what I mean so just continuously pushing through continuously trying to walk continuously move your arm no matter what if you put in the effort if you focus in it's going to come fruition it's going to come it, it's going to be, you know what I mean? And you're, yeah, you're just going to be in a better place. Just keep on trying. Don't give up. Yeah. That's beautiful. I think that even people who are not survivors are going to be inspired by it. Yeah, like you don't have to have a brain injury to listen to me. It's just positive vibes. Yes, it definitely is. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay, so now we're at the last section, which is the lyrics. So this uh, is where we get to talk a little bit about some music. Um, beautiful. Yeah, so I, I'm one of those people that, well, one, I just love music, but I also feel like, um, you know, we use music as like the backgrounds to our lives, right, uh, yeah, for different yeah. reasons. So I think the questions that I gave to you were first um, to tell me a song that or lyrics that are your go-to when things are difficult. Uh, so especially during like the beginning of my recovery, uh, "Through the Wire" by Kanye West. It, it um, just knowing that if he can kind of go through that, mm -hmm. that I can go through it. Like it was kind of like a push. It's it's a uh, very motivating for me. Like I'm like, oh, I'm not alone. You know what I mean? But it's it's also like through the wire, like no matter what, I'm going to get it. Like I'm going to succeed. And his, he basically, his success story was within that song. It's like, he, look at him now. You know what I mean? Like it, it's pushing through and no matter what, if you put the effort in, it'll, everything will happen the way you want it to. 
Oh, so, that's yeah. good. That's a good one. <laughs> Just for any listeners who who may not know, Kanye West, I think in 2002, I think. Yeah. I think it was 2002. He was in a very significant car accident and his jaw was wired shut. And that song through the wire, he was literally rapping through the wire. <laughs> literally <laughs> with his teeth closed. Like, I don't know how he did it, but he did it. And yeah. even now he can speak and have conversations and it not be an issue. Yeah. So. That's such a, that's a great song choice. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what about a song when you need to get into a calm state? So uh, India Irie, I love, Ooh. but also... I'm really big into um, frequencies, right? Like uh -huh. I, I can listen to like a fireplace, like crackling in the background or um, uh, waves that tends to like put me into like, okay, now I want to do my breathing while I'm listening to that. Or like an, an Anthony Hamilton, like a very, like just a, a vibe like the kind of groove super yeah yeah like chill like very like mellow like yeah i'm i'm into that i like r&b so it's like yeah okay we already got some things in common because <laughs> all three of these <laughs> i love it i love it and um with the sounds do you you is there like any particular app that's your favorite no mm -hmm. i just kind of type on youtube like um uh the like 500 they say like the frequency of love so it's like 500 and i could be completely wrong so okay back check me guys okay. but it's like 540 gigahertz or whatever and oh. just to kind of have that playing in the background or it might be eight i i don't know but it's like to have that playing in the background uh, and i do my breathing techniques and i get into um like a calmer seat and i'm like all right i'm i'm chill now you know what i mean and then that's good. Okay. And then what about a song um, when you are really excited about life? Mm, um, that's going to have to be uh, a future or a Drake song ah. or like, um, uh, like I love to dance. So it's like, it's so future Drake, any like, uh, maybe even Jay-Z, like just like a hardcore, like you know, like hotline bling. Like I know that's very um <laughs> I, I, I'm trying to think like everyone would know that song. Just yeah. kind of, you know, to hype me up. Bring me when I go to the gym. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like when I go to the gym, I put on some meek mill and I'm like, all right, like let's go for it. You know, like someone yelling at me, <laughs> like I need that. Like again, that's like tough love, but okay, that's pretty good. Um, and let me just ask you, like with the calm, um, is there any particular India Ari or Anthony Hamilton song that you um I can't even think like it it's just her voice. Okay. It's her voice. Mm -hmm. And it's just like it, it it like sedates me and puts me at ease. Or even SZA. Like again, oh, like that okay. like it's it's a vibe that I feel and I'm like I feel it all over my body and then like I feel I feel good <laughs> yeah you know it's interesting too because when you talk about the sounds India Ire, Anthony Hamilton and SZA do kind of have that same so they probably are in kind of that same frequency mode that <laughs> exactly 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 and uh, like I'm, I'm really into the production of music even though I don't sing and I'm, I'm in no mm -hmm. way musically talented but like I like party next door and like listening to his lives he's a producer and a songwriter mm -hmm. but I I love like listening to just riffs and people sing and just R&B it's just yeah it's a vibe so Okay, this is great. This is really <laughs> great. I'm so glad that we finally got a chance. Yes, yes. Serious. Um, well, is there? Do you want to tell us again how people can find you? Um, yeah. Any of your um, socials or? Of course. So I'm on uh, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube as at t b i underscore the line me and me so it's very short and very simple mm -hmm. um i also have a caregiver group uh, no, i so it's basically for caregivers 
that have loved ones that have a brain injury. Because I was thinking okay. for the longest, I'm like, all right, I'm going to create a mental health blog for brain injury warriors, right? And mm -hmm. people who went through trauma. And But I was like, I thought about it. I was like, I wish my mom and my dad and my loved ones had a group where they could privately, so it's a private Facebook uh, caregiver group where caregivers mm -hmm. can come in. It's about at like 683 members. Beautiful. Wow. I'm, I'm so, I love, like, I love it, but they can talk about financial. They can talk about the initial, like they need advice or they just want to complain, like go, like this is a safe space. Yeah. Go get it out of your system. And then, so I'm just trying to kind of create communities for people mm -hmm. to understand like you're not alone and to never give up. Yeah. Well, that's beautiful. Era, you Thank are you. beautiful. Thank um, you so um, much. So glad we were able to do this. Thank you so much for giving me your time on a Friday. <laughs> yes. It's whatever. It's whatever. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thanks for checking out this episode in honor of Brain Injury Awareness Month. I hope that you learned something new. I hope that you'll continue to learn more about brain injury. You can visit me at overallneuro underscore Dr. D um, so that you can learn more and, you know, engage with me.